Zeke paced around waiting for the group to return. He was getting anxious. There was no doubt that Carver was dangerous. Every nerve in his body screamed to leave. It was a past a half hour. He and Sarah had got everything packed for themselves, Clementine and Genevieve. Zeke, everything will be all right, Sarah said, as she walked up to the nervous teenager. Zeke stopped and looked at her. They're taking so long, Sarah, Zeke said. We have to leave. It's too dangerous to stay here any longer. But what about Clem? Her mom and dad are still out there, and she won't leave without them, Sarah said. And so is your dad, but we have to go, Zeke said. He walked up and grabbed his bag along with Genevieve's. Clementine looked at him with a saddened look on the face as she got up to follow. Sarah walked over and picked up her bag and Genevieve. She didn't like it, but she knew that Zeke was right. The three went into the kitchen out the back door. Zeke had already known it was going to be tough, especially since Sarah couldn't defend herself and Genevieve wasn't able to take care of herself. But given his experience, he knew they would survive. So, where are we going? Zeke asked. Sarah asked. Good question, Zeke said. He pulled out a map within Luke's drawer. It showed a path to the mountains. There was an X in the middle of the end of the path. He didn't recognize the X on the map was stood for, but he slowed, da slowed down and showed the map to Sarah. What's this mark mean? Do you know what happened when it means? Zeke asked as he pointed to the X. I, I don't know. Maybe. Wait. I actually heard over Lou, heard Luke and my dad talking about it before, Sarah said. They were talking about going to the mountains if Carver showed up. I think that symbol is where a ski lodge should be. A ski lodge? Zeke asked. Yeah, Rebecca and Alvin went there once, Sarah said. Well, all right. That might be our best location where we're going to get, Zeke said. What about my mommy and daddy? Clementine asked. I need them. It'll be okay, Clem. I'm pretty sure they're fine, Sarah said. Clem's have looked down and she said, I hope so. Sarah turned to Ge Zeke with a worried glances as they continued to move forward. Zeke hoped that they would meet up with Luke, Rebecca, Alvin, Finn, Nick, and even Carlos at some point during the evening to the mountains. They had finally settled down for the night. All right, we need twigs and sticks. You have to make sure they're dry, Zeke said. He decided to have Sarah learn some survival skills while being on the road. They would start on the gun training tomorrow before moving out. Meanwhile, Clementine played with Genevieve. Okay, Sarah said, as she went to the forest's edge to start a search. Zeke went over for, to Clementine and said, How are you and Jen holding up? Okay, I guess, Clementine said. I just, I really miss my mommy and daddy. I know, Zeke said. He turned to Genevieve and said, how are you holding up, Jen? The toddler just responded with baby noises. Yeah, you tell me about it, Zeke said with a chuckle. He glanced up to see how what Sarah was doing. He looked up to see someone grab her from behind. There was a hand over her mouth and she was dragged deeper into the forest. Be right back, Zeke said, as he went to get his bow and went into the forest. He followed the footprints prints into the forest. Stop squirming, Zeke heard a whisper. There was also some muffled yelling. Zeke got closer and closer until he saw someone holding Sarah. Soon enough, the girl slumped over and he must have choked her unconscious. He watched a man toss her to the ground and started unbuttoning his pants. Zeke knew what he was going to do. He pulled back the arrow and aimed it at the man's head. Then he released the bow, but the man must have seen Zeke at the last second. He ducked to avoid the arrow that charged at Zeke. Zeke tried to let it get another row bow arrow ready. But the man tackled him before he could bring the arrow back. The man was ferocious on his attack. He punched Zeke several times with anger and hatred in his facial features while keeping him pinned down with his other arm. Zeke went for his knife and stabbed the man in the arm, which made him scream out. Zeke pulled out his knife and the man held his bleeding arm. You fucking shit! I will kill you and dance on your freaking corpse! The man he screamed. He charged at Zeke. This man reminded Zeke of his abusive, drunkard father. He always feared his father, but now he was able to slay demons. Zeke charged with the man with the knife, and the man tackled to the ground, but Zeke and the teenager managed to stab the man in the abdomen. The scream theme, the man screamed before he punched Zeke. In response, Zeke lit the hilt of the knife and slashed the man's abdomen open. He screamed again and clutched his abdomen. Fuck it, ass! 
the man muttered as he lay on his side. You, you should have died. I hope you die. Zeke growled as he approached the man. His knife was already drenched in blood. Zeke took out the knife and plunged it into the man's skull. The man was dead, but Zeke didn't finish yet. Flashes of his drunkard, abusive father littered his mind as he pulled the knife out again and stabbed the man and again and again. He kept stabbing the dead man with his knife as new flashes and thoughts flooded his mind. He had thought about Decker. He thought about the life he could have been if it wasn't for his world. He thought about where he had normal parents. He thought about how he could have been more than an average student and, and an outcast. Finally, he thought about this man of how he would have violated Sarah in the process and he would have taken her innocence away. Zeke finally stuffed Huffle and began to look down at the knife covered in his hands. There wasn't much left of the man's face. Zeke got up from the man but soon fell to his knees. He felt the drop of the knife and began to cry. It was too much. His whole life has been with trails and now he was at his breaking point. He didn't know how long he's been crying but by the end of it he felt a pair of arms around him. He looked to see a small set of hands with a blue coat wrapped around the arms. You okay? He heard Sarah's voice say. She sounded worried and sympathetic towards him. I, I don't know, Zeke said. You saved my life, Sarah said. I, Zeke said, but he couldn't finish. He all felt good to release his sudden anger and rage. When he killed his brother's murderer, it was out of pure revenge. He did release all of his anger and frustration as he did this time. He felt a kiss on the cheek. It was Sarah. He couldn't save De Decker, but he did save Sarah. Holy shit! The two heard a familiar voice. They looked up to see Luke staring at the two. He wasn't alone, and Nick and Carlos were with him. Dad! Sarah said as she finally released her boyfriend. The three were surprised. Finally, Carlos walked over to Sarah and said, We've talked about this, he said with his arms crossed over his chest. Zeke is different, Sarah said. He loves me. You think he loves you. He's only faking it to lower your guard down. And then what happens? Well, I just hope I'll be there, Carlos said. You don't, you don't you think that you, I would know if Zeke had bad intentions better than you? I would have spent more time with him. He would have, he saved my life, Sarah said. And he put also you in danger by dragging you out here, Carlos snapped. You shouldn't be out here, period. Sarah winced from her father's yelling. Carlos, calm down. There's probably a good reason why they're out here, Luke said. C -c -c Carver, Zeke said. He got to his feet and his legs were shaky. He came. He would have killed me, but Clem stepped in. Whoa, Luke muttered. So everything must be all right. I mean, you're all in one piece. I guess that's what counts. Luke, we just can't ignore what happened here, Carlos said as he looked at the body of the violent man. Carlos, it came down to either Zeke, Sarah, or him. Luke said. I understand that, but he went beyond killing him, Carlos said. Dad, Sarah said. I'm s not sorry for what I did, Zeke said. I wasn't going to let Sarah get hurt by this man. Maybe I did go a little too far, but to be honest, I don't care. I have my own demons to fight. You just need to stay out of it. Carlos ignored the boy and said, You've just proven how unhinged and violent you truly are. I don't want you anywhere near my daughter. If you go anywhere near her, I'll assume it's a threat and I will kill you. Carlos, Luke snapped. What the hell's wrong with you? In response, Carlos punched Luke. Luke fell to the ground with a groan, and Nick turned and aimed his gun at Carlos. You don't talk to me that way, Luke, Carlos said as he looked up to Nick. And he said, put the gun down now. You're the one who's unhinged, Carlos, Nick said as Luke got back up. I will do anything to protect Sarah, Carlos said. Including threatening to kill a kid who's attacking your own friends, Luke said with a disappointed tone in his voice. He shook his head and said, I'll give this small warning. If you kill anyone in this group, you're gone. You'll be on your own. Luke, I'm just worried about Sarah, Carlos said. He started to calm down from earlier. The last thing he wanted to do was force to leave his daughter. He figured that Luke would either force him to leave or he would have had to hurt or kill his own friends to stay with his daughter. I'm worried that this world is doing her and what the other people like Zeke are doing to her. He protected her from Carver when he came to the cabin. He risked his life and now, and he protected Sarah from someone who could have hurt her. But instead of showing him the smallest hint of respect, you chastise him, Luke said. 
For a good reason, I don't want him to get the idea of him wanting to date her, Carlos said. Dad, I know you're just worried about me, but Zeke isn't like bullies. He's nice and I like him. I've actually spent time with him. I know what he's like, Sarah said. Sarah, you have no idea what he's like, Carlos said. I have a better idea. You don't spend any time with him, Sarah said. Either way, you need to listen to me or you're going to stop seeing him, Carlos said. No, Sarah said. What? Carlos snapped. He turned his glare to the teenager and crossed his arms over her chest and tried to put up a tough front. However, she was shaking up a little. I said no, you're wrong, Car Sarah said. Carlos clenched his fist and said, You're not too old for me to bend you over my knee and... All right, all right, Luke said as he got between the two. Let's just take a breather. I will not tolerate this behavior, Sarah. I'm your father. You will listen to what I tell you to do, Carlos said. No, you're a shell of my dad who was. My dad was nice and comforting, not too controlling and mean, Sarah said. I, you, you watch it, Carlos said. Look, I know you're a mess of a father after mom died. I am too. It's a daily struggle to get out of bed and put up with this now of our world, even if it is horrible. I'm still happy. It seems like you're pushing me away or each passing day until Zeke showed up. Now it seems like you're taking all that frustration out on the boy that I like, Sarah said. Carlos looked down and huffed. I'm sorry, Sarah. I, I tried to protect you. I want to keep you s innocent. But that's a thing, Dad. And I'm not, I can't be innocent. Losing some of my innocence won't turn me into a monster, Sarah said. So stop worrying about me so much. You're almost killing yourself because you're constantly worried. Sarah, I wasn't worried about you becoming a monster. I was worried you'd be overwhelmed. I was afraid you would die in this world, Carlos said. I know, I've been trying to get used to it and everything is scary, but it helps when we have friends, Sarah said. She then gestured to Luke and Nick and Zeke. Carlos huffed and said, All right, I'll try and ease up a bit and give Zeke a chance, although I still don't like you dating. I know, but I'm growing up and Zeke is one of the nicest people I've ever met. I trust him, Sarah said. Carlos gave a hesitant nod before Sarah went over to join Zeke. Zeke smiled as he took the girl's hand. The two walked away back over to Clementine and Genevieve. Nick followed behind them while Carlos and Luke walked next to each other. I, I'm sorry for the outburst. I guess Sarah's right. She's growing up. She doesn't need me as much as she used to, Carlos said. I can't imagine what you're going through, Luke said. I never had a kid, but I'm sure it's difficult to see them grow up and make decisions on their own. Carlos nodded and said, I babied Sarah for as long as I could. I just hope she can make the right decisions. I just don't know about the Zeke boy, Carlos said. He's a good kid. You just need to get to know him, Luke said. Carlos shook his head in response. He didn't seem too confident with Luke's words. Soon enough, the group returned to the clearing where Alvin, Rebecca, Clementine, and Genevieve were. The group could proceed it to the mountains where the ski lodge was.